the AFL, as we approach season 2004, would like to introduce you to an information tape which explains and clarifies some aspects of the laws of Australian football. The tape is designed to give you a greater understanding of the laws and their interpretations through these examples. The first segment on the tape is head-throat contact, which comes under the broad heading of high contact. The rule states, a player who makes prohibited contact with any part of his body above the shoulders shall be penalised. The essence of the rule states that any grabbing or pushing to the throat will be deemed to be illegal contact. That any contact to the face or head will also be deemed to be illegal contact, regardless of the situation. In this example, Brisbane Lion Jason Ackermanis receives high contact and then retaliates against his opponent with high contact. Therefore, the free kick is reversed. Any form of retaliation of an illegal nature will result in a reversal of the free kick. The next segment shows further examples of high contact, where players are in possession or attempting to gain possession of the football. This bump by Melbourne's David Neitz to his opponent's head is illegal. This contact by Nietzsche's teammate Clint Bizzle to his opponent is also deemed to be illegal. No, it's not, but look at this. That is just wanting the footy. In another case, this bump to the head by David King is illegal. In this situation, Matthew Lloyd attempts to tackle Brad Green, who ducks his head, resulting in contact initiated by Green, which therefore is not a free kick. The umpire in these circumstances needs to take into account whether the tackle by Lloyd is reckless and contravenes the laws of the game. Players who use their knees to make contact with an opponent will also be penalised by a free kick or a 50 metre penalty. Damien Cubido slides into the contest with his knees, resulting in a free kick. Let's have a look why. In he goes. As we see in these other examples, once a player has possession by way of mark or a free kick, any contact by an opponent with their knees will result in a 50 metre penalty. Intentional, reckless or negligent use of the knees may result in a report. This segment covers holding the ball and the various components of this law. Prior opportunity is the first element to holding the ball. Thornton to Lappin, gone! Holding the ball! Great chase, Medhurst! An umpire will deem a player to have had prior opportunity to dispossess the ball, either with a kick or a handball, if he is tackled while in possession of the ball without immediately and legally disposing of the ball. An attempt to kick or handball in this circumstance is not acceptable. Time now to turn to diving on the ball. It's contagious, as is the opposite, I guess. The pressure and the indecision, which has riddled Port Adelaide today. Bolton better get out of there or he's in trouble. And he probably should have known better. Players who dive on the ball or drag the ball under their body, if tackled correctly, must immediately knock the ball clear. Failure to do so will result in a free kick being paid. to him, Sanderson. Well done, Philip Matera. Sanderson could add more time. Go on, holding the ball. Sanderson went and tucked it in underneath him. And there's the pressure that he flies up in that forward line for West Coast. Finally, let's turn to no prior opportunity, reasonable time. The last component relating to holding the ball is when a player has had no prior opportunity. However, must be given a reasonable time to dispose of the football when tackled legally. In this situation, an attempt to kick or handball is acceptable under the laws of the game. In these examples, the ball is not pinned to the player being tackled. So therefore, he must dispose or attempt to dispose of the ball. Yes, he was. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. And, uh, that one penalised. Now Matthews, who's done well on picket. Schneider man over the footy. Oh, he's gone for that. The umpire believed he attempted to get rid of the ball there at all. 
assist has been important. He ran past Bassett, who goes for a bit of a circle. He's caught holding the ball. Plenty of time. Brogan the tap. Peter Burgoyne. Taking in a tackle. Up by said you had a chance to get rid of it holding the ball. The ball comes back to Gallagher. In marking contests, players who make the ball their sole objective will be protected. In this case, Wayne Carey infringes Justin Lepic by making contact from the front, which prevents Lepic from contesting for the ball. Running back with the flight. The 75, he kicks up towards Rocker. Was he interfered with? Yes, he was! Here, Anthony Rocker is prevented from contesting the ball due to his access to the ball being blocked by Nathan Bassett. Bassett has no intention of contesting the ball. Puts the foot on the gas, goes to half forward. In these next two cases, we see examples of players holding an opponent by the Guernsey or the body in a marking contest. This will result in a free kick. Lenny Hayes to work in into Rewald, used his body well, and there's some hanging on. And the Saints fans say, finally, we're going to get a free in front of goal as David meets the... This segment covers ruck contests and the various components of this law. The first component relates to deliberate out of bounds. Any player who knocks the ball out of bounds on the full from a ruck contest will be penalised. That was punched on the full, I think. Bounce, 10 metres out then. Wakeland heads for the line. Free kick, free kick. Over the full. Third man up, and it went over the line on the full from the bounce down. Quirky. The next component regarding ruck contest infringements relates to illegal contact in ruck contests. <laughs> this may be in the form of blocking, shepherding or holding. Here we see Matthew Primus using his arms to block his opponent from contesting the ball. Primus pinged for holding Michael off, I think, with one hand while he palmed the ball with the other. Here, Jamie Charman uses his leg to block his opponent from contesting the ball. The next component of ruck play relates to crossing the line. Ruckman are not permitted to cross the line until the umpire has bounced the ball. In this example, Steve McKee should have been penalised. This next component relates to players taking the ball out of the ruck. The player takes the ball out of the air at ruck contests and is legally tackled. He must correctly dispose of the ball immediately. Here Steve Alessio takes possession of the ball, is not tackled, therefore permitted to play on. Took it out, wasn't tackled, kicks inside the 50. A slight variation, Alistair Lynch takes possession of the ball and is immediately tackled and immediately disposes of the ball. Play on. In contrast, Steve McKee takes the ball from the ruck and is tackled correctly. He does not immediately dispose of the ball, resulting in a free kick against him. If you grab it out of the ruck or a throw in, it's deemed a prior opportunity and you are wide open to be gone. Handball. No, no, it's not an attempt. You must kick or handball, not attempt involved. Next, we turn our attention to the rule regarding deliberate out-of-bounds. When an umpire determines a deliberate out-of-bounds decision, he will take into account the following criteria. What is the player's intention? What is the level of force of the kick or handball? What is the degree of pressure the player is under? Is there a teammate in the vicinity of where the ball crosses the boundary line? Here, Jonathan Hay, while under some pressure, forcefully and intentionally kicks the ball over the boundary line. It should also be noted, he had no teammates where the ball crossed the line. While under some pressure in this example, Peter Everett intentionally handballs the ball over the boundary line. No question about this, Spider just handballing it over the line. Jonathan Hay again, and this time while under some pressure, forcefully kicks the ball over the boundary line. That's always day, it's a free, it is. It should also be noted, he had no teammates where the ball crossed the line. Couldn't quite take the mark. Jason Saddington here is under some pressure. He handballs in the direction of a teammate who is near the boundary line. Even though the ball goes out of bounds, this does not meet the criteria for deliberate out of bounds. Did he go deliberately for the line? Keeping the ball in motion. The following examples are of players making every attempt to keep the ball in play, even though they are under pressure and in close proximity to the boundary line. So he kicks it for himself, that's great play. Oh, Sensational fantastic. stuff from Gavin Wanganeen. Kicks along towards Midhurst, one-handed, couldn't bring it down. Here's Archer under pressure.
pressure. Clever kick. Well, the boundary line went out. No, Anthony Stevens, an even better result for the Ruse. And he bangs it along the line up to the wing. They'll swing it to that outer side. Although Hawks have got numbers here. Bounces past Vandenberg, though. Ablett's about to be collared. The boundary line is his friend. He keeps it in. Lekas. Awkward bouncing ball. Living back is Woods. Slips a would-be tackler. He's about 30 metres out from his own defensive goal. Charged down by Jones. Ricochets towards the boundary. Sliding in his bell. Interesting hand pass. Looked like a throw. Hayden's got it. Proud thought so. But then they barrack for the Kangaroos. Most of them sitting on the foot. This segment covers illegal blocking and shepherding. In recent weeks. Let's watch for McGregor. We just see there at the back of the screen. Yeah. McGregor really didn't have eyes on the ball. All players should have the opportunity to contest yeah, the football. A whistle off the ball, and it's a Lions free kick. It's going to Darren White. The umpire that was deep in the forward pocket, running 40 metres in, hit seen a holding. No, it's going back to Shattuck. So that's nine in five matches. There's all the holding going on, and see why the umpire made the decision he did. And straight into the frack, RE means business. Just wondering whether if uh, you can't break the tag on Bacon that you don't stick him on a rewall who's also playing on the wing. Staker, well done, goes out wide. Next, we turn our attention to the rules relating to 50 metre penalties, specifically late contact in marking contests, encroaching into the five metre protected area, and, and time wasting. It's 50. It's 50 against Chris Scott. First up, we see Chris Scott make late contact with his opponents. Next, Mark Graham encroaches into the five metre protected area when he was not involved in the marking contest. Graham gives away 50. He wasn't involved in the contest and then came in and held him up. Here, Adam Schneider punches the ball over the fence when the ball had clearly been kicked out of bounds on the fall. This is an example of time wasting. Umpire McLaren is exactly right in his decision there. Other free kicks. This section is to clarify some unusual free kicks. Example one relates to a player refusing to follow an umpire's direction. Kent Kingsley does not conform with the umpire's instructions when directed to move around on his mark. Umpire saying, come on, another five or six metres. If a player refuses to obey the instructions of an umpire in any situation, a free kick may be paid. In this circumstance, the ball has clearly gone over the boundary line. The player may leave the ball or return it directly to the boundary umpire. In this example, Peter Everett kicked the ball deliberately over the fence, resulting in a free kick being awarded. This example relates to an official interfering with play. This trainer interferes with an opposition player, resulting in a free kick being awarded. Chris Carley would be absolutely livid at that trainer, just not having any awareness of what's going on. This free kick is for contact being made to a player after he has disposed of the ball. Downfield, yep. It'll be a downfielder. And there's Steve Alessio pleading his case with the umpire, but a free kick downfield because he cannon into Jolly. Charging. The following examples relate to charging. A charge is an act of colliding with an opposition player where the amount of physical force used is unreasonable or unnecessary in the circumstance. Uh, that the umpire is talking to, he's been reported for charging Matthew Whelan. No. Gardner, he didn't take a long time, he wants Wilson! Oh! Third one got in his way, free kick Troy Wilson. You don't see that very often. It's usually the other way around on the back side. Rough play. Rough play is an act where a player engages in an action which is unreasonable. Here, Ian Prendergast's actions are unnecessary in the circumstances. There you go, you heard from the umpire there, umpire Darren Morris, that Prendergast has been reported for rough play now. Let's have a look at this spear tackle again from Peter Burke. Oh, that is dangerous. When a player is tackled in this manner, it is deemed to be rough play and shall result in a free kick and possibly a report. Spear tackle. You get weeks for that in rugby league. The following situation relates to start of games. There are two scenarios which can be used to start a game. Scenario one is a normal start to a game where no infringements are observed. In this situation, the umpire will bounce the ball as per normal. What will the umpire do? Will he start the game? He does. The umpire's going to bounce the ball and no one's in the centre as players rush back in. Scott McLaren and uh, what a good move it was. 
scenario too is where an infringement has been observed which results in the umpire paying a free kick before the ball is bounced. The umpires come in, there might be a free kick before the opening bounce and we're away. In this situation, the free kick will be awarded in the centre of the ground or where the infringement occurred, depending on which is the greatest advantage for the team infringed against. we'll start with a free kick to Ben Cousins. The Eagles went in This section clarifies a series of set kicks. Here, Barry Hall has been awarded a free kick, which requires him to take his kick outside the boundary line. When Hall is directed to play on by the umpire, he may still dispose of the ball in accordance with the laws of the game. Failure to do so will result in the umpire calling for a boundary throw. It should be noted that Hall still has the opportunity to bring the ball back into play, even though the umpire has called play on. This scenario shows the option Alistair Lynch took in relation to a kick near the goalpost whilst taking advantage of the five metre protected area. This circumstance can only arise in this area of the ground as the player on the mark cannot encroach over the mark until the umpire calls play on. A player bringing the ball back into play after a behind must have one foot behind any of the lines which define the goal square. Over the line will have a bounce at the top of the goal square for Hawthorne. Well, that's a cardinal sin. Shouldn't happen. These are clarifications of incidents in general play where a player has possession of the ball and any part of his body makes contact with any of the scoring posts. Providing the ball does not touch the posts or cross the scoring line, play shall continue. In these examples, even though the players have made contact with the post whilst in possession of the ball, they are entitled to play on. All clear a goal. No problem with that one at all. As long as you're not swinging off the post, which is a free kick or a portable offence, then it's OK. This section relates to umpire contact and abuse. Following a forum in relation to umpire contact, positioning of umpires has been modified and now umpires would not be positioned as per the following examples. All players have a duty of care to use best endeavours to avoid contact with umpires. The AFL has introduced a zero tolerance policy in relation to the abuse of umpires. Where a player directly verbally abuses an umpire, a free kick, 50 metre penalty or report will result. You swore three times, you disputed oh, you the decision what? three times. What's that? Right well, you're going to give me a warning. No, no, I don't have to put up with the cheap shot.